the process has gone really well. Uh, we learn a little bit more every day. We get a little bit more guidance from the CDC and Oregon Health Authority every day. Uh, at this point, we've limited to uh, men's and women's soccer and women's volleyball because they're obviously preparing for what the fall season looks like. And also men's and women's basketball. Uh, those are the two sports in our portfolio where the coaches can actually work with the student athletes during the summer. Um, and those uh, coach-led workouts can start on Monday the 20th. So we've, we've really focused on those five. Uh, we will build out from there. Uh, we've learned a lot about testing and facility management and cleaning. I would say it's gone very well, but um, this is our first attempt at uh, navigating a pandemic ever in pilot athletics. And I think the, the great thing is we've learned and changed plans and um, shared plans with other schools and picked up some things that worked for them. But overall, we're, we're very pleased. We expect to have more guidance from the NCAA here in the coming days on recommendations for testing um, during the season, um, for surveillance, uh, pregame, travel. Um, the NCAA has put together a group that's sort of the, the best of the best in the medical world that's going to hand some recommendations down and uh, we should have those by the end of the week. Uh, we'll overlay those with what we're doing, um, get our doctors involved, and see where we go from there. Challenges with the, the international student athletes um, have been really, there's only so much we can do to help them, um, both with uh, Europe and I would say Australia a little bit, Canada. Uh, we've been able to bring some uh, student athletes back. Um, some are still working through the process. Um, some physically um, can't leave uh, where they are. Uh, we're fortunate to have uh, Mike Pelly in International Student Services who uh, works with them on a daily basis. And really what we're trying to do is provide as much uh, emotional support as we can and, and continue to work um, to get them back um, at the safest time possible. It's absolutely uh, the right announcement. It's something that we had um, talked about for uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. We had talked about a multitude of dates. Uh, really where September 24th comes from is uh, that's the first date of the conference volleyball season and really the first WCC competition of the year. Uh, the athletic directors and the presidents were very much aligned on uh, the route forward. And that being said, it's something that we'll, we'll constantly reevaluate. I, I do like the caveat we can play uh, non-conference games uh, if it makes sense. Uh, play a midweek game against a regional foe. That doesn't mean we're going to uh, hop on a plane and, and uh, leave the region or go back east or to the Midwest. It's probably um, just inserting a, a, a regional rival uh, into the schedule. And, and that will also be tricky. I think with a lot of those, we'll have to look at our testing policy and uh, look at the opponent's testing policy and make sure it's, it's um, a good idea for all involved. At this point, our plan is still to start um, practice in the, the first week of August for volleyball, um, for soccers, uh, and then have cross country follow uh, in mid-August. Uh, it won't be a traditional first day of practice at all. It will be more of probably a small group chance for um, the student athletes to finally work with their coaches again. You know, soccer, a lot of the spring season was canceled. So they haven't had a chance to be on the field with their coaches for, you know, five, uh, four months, going on four months. By that time, it'll be going on five months. Uh, so the nice thing is, again, it gets our coaches on the field uh, with the athletes. Uh, gives them a longer ramp up period. And I think from an injury perspective, um, the injury prevention rates um, should be much better because you're not taking student athletes from a you know, three, four month break right into um, intense training and, and games. Uh, we, we weren't ready to play in August. Um, our coaches were uh, all online on that. Um, this, this is a chance for the coaches really to just kind of slowly bring it back. It's going to be, uh, I think it's something we'll look at individually. 
Uh, cross country obviously is probably going to have to compete against schools outside the WCC. It'll probably be a, a more regional approach. Um, but as you look at cross country, it's sort of the risk scale and things you can do. It's, it's a lower risk. Um, soccer's, I, I, don't, I don't know, uh, maybe one, maybe two. Um, but the last thing we want is soccer playing three games in a week or four games in eight days. Um, the rest and recovery in that sport is really important. So I don't see us adding a bunch of games to that schedule. Volleyball, uh, Meg and I have had some preliminary discussions about what it will like, what it would be like to play um, somebody from the Northwest in the middle of the week. So say uh, we play Pepperdine and LMU on Thursday, Saturday, maybe you play, you know, Portland State or Seattle U or someone uh, on that Tuesday night. Um, those are things we're going to have to feel out with those opponents. I, I wouldn't write it out, but I don't think it's, it's a, a done deal either. That's a really good question. Um, I currently serve on the NCA uh, Women's Soccer Committee. Um, Jason Bro of our staff serves on the NCA Tennis uh, Committee. At this point, the NCA Fall Championships are still going to happen as scheduled. Uh, it will be interesting uh, if we need to make adjustments to uh, build a bubble around sites. Um, to change field sizes based on how many schools are playing in the fall. I think there's um, some decisions that we've you know, maybe talked about at the conference level that the NCA I know is looking at. Uh, but at this point where um, systems go and uh, no dates have changed for fall championships. At this point, uh, our focus is to play fall sports at the end of September. Uh, I'd be lying if we haven't talked about if that doesn't happen, uh, what's next? And what, you know, likely is next is do you push um, the fall seasons uh, to the spring? Um, does basketball play a reduced season uh, with no non-conference? Um, I think for us, the big thing on the, in the fall would be, you know, what do you, what do, you do with men's and women's soccer? Uh, can you play them in the spring? Um, volleyball and cross country are different discussions because we have indoor volleyball and beach volleyball. Um, you probably can't do both at the same time. Um, you have cross country and outdoor track and field. How do you balance those? Uh, but there are things we're talking about. I think my, um, I want to give our student athletes the opportunity to compete uh, when it's safe. Um, there's also some logistical challenges that we would absolutely work through, but <laughs> if you had 12 or 13 sports playing at once, um, there would be some strain on facilities and staff and some pieces that we'd probably have to uh, recalibrate and make some changes to make that all work. But, you know, we would make it work if, that's, if that is what comes to be here. For our sports that are um, not on full rides, um, you know, particularly like, a, a, you know, a men's soccer where you have 28 to 30 student athletes on your roster and NCA limit for scholarships is 9.9 .9, and that's not the only sport um, like that at UP or, or otherwise. Uh, anytime you can get that relief I think is, is beneficial for um, the department and the program and the university.